if somebody wanted to do what you do, like, how does that work? You know what I mean? Well, honestly, I don't think nobody can do what I do. Oh. You know, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> that could have been the cold open right there. <laughs> oh, we missed it. <laughs> Welcome to the Wilson Wealth Show a thought-provoking show about building wealth in the new economy. Each week, members of the Wilson Wealth team and their guests will discuss how to navigate the world of personal finance, stocks, real estate, and entrepreneurship to help you build wealth in the new economy. And now, here is your host, Sierra Makash. Well, it is great to have everyone on the show. So today we are going to be talking all about entrepreneurship through Derek's experiences. Derek started out in a career of education and transitioned into entrepreneurship. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, Sierra, I'm just excited about today's show because we finally get to sit down with someone I've admired for quite a long time. And that is indeed Derek Salter. Uh, Derek, again, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you, Maurice. You doing okay? Can't complain, man. Can't complain. You know, you and I just uh, got back from a trip. I don't want to be like one of those multi-level marketing guys, so I'm not going to say we were <laughs> somewhere on a beach or something like that. But, you know, we, we kicked off the summer together already, so it's good to get you back in you know, on, a, on a more Absolutely. formal basis. Definitely, definitely. So let, I'm just going to get down to it. You know, five years ago, and you know I love this, five years ago, five, six years ago, you, you posted very publicly on Facebook. Good night. God bless. And you let the world know you were done being the principal of a leading public school in Nashville, Tennessee. You effectively left your day job to run your real estate business. How does someone who rose so fast in their first career and after so many years of training get to the point where they can quit so early and strike out on their own? How'd you do it? <laughs> Well, Maurice, it actually took, you know, about 20 years for me to get to <laughs> where I am now. But, you know, I just kind of started investing when I was in college. You know, a lot of my friends were spending their refund checks on rims and car stereos. And I was buying a house, you know, to actually live in. And um, so I got my first taste of real estate there. And then I had this really good friend. His name was Corey Early. He... Uh, he left Huntsville and he was working as a pharmaceutical sales rep in Chicago at the time. And he was telling me, hey, man, I'm getting ready to quit this job. I'm like, hey, man, you just got to Chicago. You're only 25 years old. Why are you, you going to quit a job that's paying you $100,000 a year? And he said, uh, man, I'm in real estate, you know, and I'm doing really well. I just did my first deal and I made a quarter million dollars. Mm. And the first thing I said was, man, stop lying. You do not have a quarter million dollars. <laughs> we were just broke here all together two years ago. So you can't be moving that fast. And so Corey gave me uh, his bank account uh, passwords <laughs> and I logged in his account and he sure enough had a quarter million dollars in his account. <laughs> so I started saying, man, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, I, I want to do this. And, um, uh, he said, man, well, you know, I'm just flipping houses right now, you know, renting, renting houses and, you know, using home equity line of credit to pretty much do everything that that I've been doing. So uh, I said, man, can you uh, can you come teach me? And he uh, he came down to uh, Huntsville. I took a home equity line of credit out uh, on the house that I was currently staying in and we found a condo. I remodeled that condo. And I sold that condo within three weeks after finishing and remodeling it. Now, keep in mind, at the time, I'm a teacher. This is, what, my second year, and I'm making $32,000. Mm. I sold a condo, and my net profit was $34,000. Okay. So I made my entire salary in a month and a half. Yeah. And ever since then, my mind had just kind of been wide open, you know, to real estate. Well, that, that explains, because I was going to ask you, you know, um, well, let me just say, like, first, let, let me let the audience know before we go further that you are indeed a client of Wilson Wealth. And, and you know, we just have, happen to have very successful clients, but I want the audience to know. And while you can't share your experience with our firm because of how we're regulated, um, you know, I, you can you can tell your friends, but you can't tell everybody else. But I just want the audience to know that. But also, you know, I've known you for a while, even before you were a client. And I knew real estate was something you were into. Do you think you have a passion for it? And why do you think that is your passion, if so? 
Yes, I, I do have a passion for it, Maurice. I've uh, just always admired, you know, how I can walk into a house. Uh, it can be run down, and I still see value in it. I, I mm. see value with things with real estate. And, you know, just from watching, you know, others, you know, coming from where I come from, it's the quickest way, you know, to a million dollars and, you know, to financial freedom. So, you know, that that has been my passion in order to set my family up, you know, so that my kids don't have to face some of the same obstacles that I had to growing up. And so real estate has provided me that opportunity to make sure that everything is good moving forward. You know what? That that explains your passion for the business. But but if we're being honest. Everyone's got a passion for something, right? You know, what I'm saying? and some of us are lucky enough. I mean, you know, it's like cliche. I want to do something I'm passionate about, right? Right, uh, right. And some of us are lucky enough to be passionate about something that's actually profitable. Like for you, it's real estate. For me, it's investing. But you know, having passion alone doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be successful. So, so I come back to where you are. I come back to Nashville. I come back to Nashville every year for homecoming, and I hear the same thing man, look how much Nashville has grown. I, I should have bought this property or I should have held on to that property and I'd have, I'd have all this money, you know? And what I want to know from you, and without you sharing any trade secrets, why do you think you were able to capitalize on the local market in ways that other people only talk about? Maurice, I, I would have to say uh, a lot of luck and a lot of actually, you know, doing what others are afraid to do. Mm. You know, once once we began, um, you know, I had a tenant. How it all got started for me, I had a tenant that uh, was renting a house that, you know, we owned. And my neighbors kept calling me every other day. Hey, this guy's having a party over here, you know, every weekend. You know, so I finally said, you know, let me go over and see what this guy's doing. So I went and talked to the guy. And he told me, he said, hey, man, I'm renting your house out on Airbnb. I said, hmm. So that kind of explains everything. I said, well, you need to tell me everything you know about this Airbnb process <laughs> or, you, or you're going to have to get out of this house. <laughs> so, you know, um, he told me everything. He gave me a great foundation um, about Airbnb. And then after that, you know, I told him he had two two options. I said, you can either buy this house. Or I'm going to rate. I'm going to double your rent. Mm. You know, because um, I see the amount of money that you're making and he chose the latter. He chose to buy the home. Mm. And so when he made that move, that let me know how serious this was. So uh, my wife and I, we had some money saved up. We borrowed a lot from my 401k and, uh, you know, I bought my first property. And after I bought the first property, within six months, I was buying another and just kind of followed that process, man. And everything has turned out great. Just actually doing it and not talking about it right. is I would say, what I would say is the, it's the biggest reason that I've been successful. Right. I agree. I agree. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just like, tell me more. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, on a more serious note though, what did your wife think about your transition into entrepreneurship and how has it impacted your, your family? Like when you first got started, like what was that conversation like if you could let us into that? Yeah, absolutely. So when I was 24, when I was getting ready to walk away from my, my teaching job, you know, at that time, she said, Derek, you know, uh, you need to really think about this. You know, you're just getting started. You don't have a lot of money saved up. Um, so, and the real estate market might tank. You just never know what could happen. And, she, you know, education is your first passion. So why don't you fulfill your educational goals first? And real estate will always be here for you to come back to when you're ready. So me being me, you know, I listened to what she said. And she was right. I took her advice. That's when we had the, the market crash, like immediately, like six months to a year right after that. And so the second time around, uh, after, when I was a principal this time, she uh, told her what I wanted to do. She saw the income that was coming in. She said, hey, you're actually missing out on money by going to that school every day. You satisfy all of your goals. You know, she said, now it's time to move on if you think that you're ready. So she was very supportive of the transition. I see. I see. Fair enough. Well, you know, you, you touched some on how you um, got the knowledge to start doing real estate investing. So with that, like, how do you, if somebody wants to do what you do, like, how does that work? 
You know what I mean? Well, honestly, I don't think nobody can do what I do. Oh. You know, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> and, and just in such a in such a short time frame, you know, uh, you know, my thing, you know, because people come to me all the time with some of these same questions, and you know, my thing is, I tell them, hey, if you want to invest, just just start doing it now. Just find you something. What I recommend to most people. Um, is to buy a duplex or a quadplex. That's always my first recommendation when people tell me they want to get into the market. But if you're wanting to get into the short-term rental side, you know, my thing is, hey, you got to pick the right city, the right time, and just go ahead and buy a property, you know, because I can sit here and talk to you all day, but until you actually, you know, start doing the work, right. you know, that's going to be the, the, the biggest thing, the biggest way that you're going to learn. Got it, got it, okay. Fantastic. So you don't have like a course or something like that, the Derek Salter real estate course or what have you. <laughs> well, I mean, we're, has we're, work, we're working. We're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Got it. No, definitely. Um, so what what was your greatest challenge as an entrepreneur and how did you overcome it, Derek? Uh, in the beginning, uh, it was just uh, the financing, the financing part. Uh, getting banks, you know, after they see a couple of properties on your credit, and, you know, they they started to be a little bit hesitant because at the time banks wasn't uh, really familiar with short term rentals and how they worked. And so what I began to do is tell my friends about it and show all of my friends how much money I was making and say, hey, if you put this property in your name, add me to the deed, I'm going to give you half of everything and we're just going to split this. So that way I was able to actually double, you know, the amount of properties that I had at the time. So I believe I had four or five and I got all of my friends to sign on and let me let my company manage the property. And also, you know, I uh, have equity in the house and as well as uh, profit sharing as well. So that way, all of my friends started making a ton of money, you know, and I doubled, you know, my, my properties that I had. So I went from five to ten within a year. Yeah, that's smart. It's definitely wow. smart. Definitely. Um, so after being in business for several years, what do you know now that you wish you would have known when you first started? <laughs> Hindsight is always twenty twenty, right? <laughs> of course. I just wish that uh, I would have bought, purchased more, more just, just more real estate, you know, because at the time you could buy houses uh, that – for, you know, 10000 15000 you know, a, a very, very little amount of money. You know, I just wish I would have, you know, bought, bought those, purchased those homes and just rented them out. You know, just as much inventory that I possibly could have gotten. That's what I wish I would have done uh, back when I was younger, between the ages of 24 and 30. I see. I see. Fair enough. And you, you touched a little bit, Derek, on the economic downturn um, back in like 06, 08, and around that time frame. How did that have an impact on your business at all? Uh, not, not at all. It didn't affect me in any way because primarily for me, you know, at that, at that particular time, all I was doing was renting. So when people are not able to buy houses, there's always going to be a renter's market. Mm -hmm. Always, no matter what, because everybody's not always able to buy. You know, so my rental properties were doing great and were able to get me through, you know, that uh, downturn without any losses. Right. Right. Yeah, well, you know, um, I'm sure you've been keeping track with how the current housing market is. You know, we're, we're hitting like all time highs and lows. Has that affected anything for you? Uh, yes. Just <laughs> on where I can purchase land that, you know, here in Nashville now. It's becoming really scarce. You know, mm -hmm. we have so many, um, so many people that are, are are buying, and it's just becoming scarce and hard to find now. And when you do, of course, a nice uh, price tag also comes along with that. Mm. More now, more do you, I know you're based out of Nashville. Are there any other cities that you invest in? Yes, yes, yes. We uh, purchase our property down in Atlanta on uh, Rental Square. Okay. So uh, we, we, we're transitioning into that market, but they, uh, they're kind of going through the changes that Nashville went through and the zoning and the regulations right now. So I'm going to put that on pause until all of the smoke clears there. 
Mm-hmm. And then uh, once once it does, you know, we'll continue to tap into that market because the home that we have there is doing exceptionally well. I see. My area, fantastic. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got you got you got to have money coming through Atlanta if you're gonna you know be in business in the South. So that's definitely tops. Um, you know, something I wanted to get back to, Derek, um, that I think you know uh, anybody who's looking to strike out from their job has to consider. I, I remember when I left my first job, I was such a, a rookie in corporate America. I felt bad, you know, leaving them. And I talked with HR and, you know, it was a brother in HR and he said, look, man, you don't owe these people anything. And I felt that I, that I did. They put me through grad school and, and made it very comfortable for me uh, my first two years out of college. I imagine for somebody like you, you know, it's easy for me to vilify corporate America. Um, you know, for me, corporate America is cubicles, parking, you know, parking garages and, and commutes. But you were technically not in corporate America. You were in, you know, the school system and you were leading a team and you were doing things that impacted, you know, students and their families in a positive way. And if I'm not mistaken, I mean, you turned the school around. Right. So was it hard to leave, you know, that, that you know, you were having, you know, a very, uh, you know, beyond the money, you were impacting uh, so many lives. Did you feel guilty? Did you feel, was it hard? You know, what was that like? Yes, yes, yes and no, Maurice. Uh, I, I would say, you know, yes, it was hard because, you know, I came to that school. I had been there two years as their principal. Um, when I got there, the school was the worst performing school in, uh, in the state of Tennessee. Mm-hmm. You know, it's on the bottom, the bottom 5%. When I left Murray, the school was in the top three of the best, highest performing schools in the state of, in the state of Tennessee. Wow. And this all happened exactly. over a two year, a two year time frame. So, wow. you know, just, you know, a lot of people followed me to that school. I had some teachers that I was very mm-hmm. loyal to and committed to, and they were loyal and committed to me as well. You know, and the families, you know, the families in that community, they, they relied upon me. They relied upon my vision. They, they believed in me and helped me, you know, see my, uh, my vision for that school through. So, you know, leaving them, you know, was, was, was very, 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 very difficult. It was a long thought out decision. But at the time, you know, I was always told in order to help somebody else, you got to help yourself first. Right. Oh yes. So, yeah. So I figured I could better impact the community, you know, from a position where, I wouldn't have to deal with the bureaucracy of education, you know, so that's the no part that I don't regret because just dealing with, you know, central office and, you know, all these people over you that are trying to tell you to do things in education that they've never done before, you know, so actually, you know, severing that tie and not having to, you know, answer to anyone. uh, No, I don't regret that at all. (laughs) No, I bet that was pretty freeing in a way. Uh, you, you, you can only imagine my wife, the day that I resigned, my wife told me about two months later that I was a much nicer guy. (laughs) (laughs) I bet. I bet. Well, uh, Derek, I have kind of like an off topic question for you. I have been seeing so many things going around about squatters and rental properties, especially like Airbnb and um, other rental properties like that because of the pandemic. Have you had any experience with that at all? Uh, uh, fortunately, I hadn't had anything uh, remotely close to that. You know, oh the worst God. thing I get is, you know, somebody stopping up a toilet real bad and having to send my <laughs> maintenance guys over to clear it out. But I uh, know we haven't had any issues with, uh, with squatters or anything like that. And partially because, you know, we're in our homes uh, probably once a week, you know, just checking everything out and making sure everything is running efficiently. That's smart. Yeah. I, I, I bet the maintenance is pretty crazy for that, though. I mean, how many properties right. did you say you have right now? So now we have about 42. 42. My God. Yeah. That's a full, that is a full time job right Operator. there. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, luckily, you know, I have a, a great team. My assistant, she's phenomenal. My maintenance guys, my accountant, like every everybody that's a part of the team, like they really make sure, you know, that uh, they try to take as much stress off of me as possible and um, free me up so that I'm able, able to go out and uh, do other things. That's awesome. Now, now, you're using the word, Sierra mentioned it, and you mentioned it. You know, let, let's get to the other side of this because, you know, work hard, play hard, right? I, I want you to tell the audience. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I want you to I want you to tell. All right. So when I was a kid, people think Instagram is is bad because it shows all these lifestyles. And, and I have to tell people when I was a kid, every Sunday after the football games, a show would come on CBS called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Um, <laughs> we like to see people going big. Right. Like, you know, we may not like that we can do it 24 seven on our phones, but we like to see it. You know, tell the audience what it's like to wake up and own 40 plus properties, leave a career. I can't say some of the other stuff you're doing, but, but what, what does it feel like to be like free, free? You know, like, you know, like, like you, you don't answer to nobody. Like, you know, like, like what does, do you get the God complex? Do you have to catch yourself like going too hard? Because see, Derek's doing stuff he hasn't mentioned on this call yet. I'm not going to say he has to mention it, but. Like, what is that like for you? Like, compared to where you where you thought you were headed when you got your graduate degree? Like, can you believe it? Do you like put on Drake? Like, what <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 Maurice. Well, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is just stretch. <laughs> you know, and, and I and I yawn. You know, and I and I and I praise the the man up above for you know putting me in a position. You know, to to just wake up and do whatever the hell I want to do, <laughs> you know. Um, but my, I'm pretty consistent with my routine. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. I take the kids to school, but for for the most part, I wake up, I work out with my trainer. Uh, I come back home, I make me some bacon and eggs over easy. Mm -hmm. You know, and around eleven thirty, twelve o'clock, you know, I sit in front of this computer and my day starts. You yeah. know, um, and and that's kind of where the magic happens. You know, getting out you know, with other guys that are in the field and, you know, just, just hanging out with them and coming up with new innovative ideas of, you know, how, you know, we can put our minds together and make uh, some more uh, great real estate deals happen. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's something that, you know, I'm glad you went there with it because a lot of folks, I see a trend now where people say, I don't have a dream job. I don't dream about working and things yeah. of that nature. And, and, and you hear a lot about like passive income and but at the end of the day, I, I have not seen examples of truly successful businesses where there's not the founder or the new leader who isn't putting in something like a work day. And, and I know I've I spent time with you offline. Um, you know, you're on that computer now. You're counting money, but you but you, you have to count it because you got to make sure you're getting, you know, people that are renting from you are actually doing what they're supposed to do. And then you got to deploy all your service teams and whatnot. So you're working. I mean, you're, you're doing CEO level stuff and um, but you're doing what you want to do. So I think sometimes people lose sight of the fact that, um, you know, you have to definitely still work your business on some level. You can't just let it drift out there because you're you're constantly competing with a lot of different operators in that space. So I'm glad you mentioned that, the routine. That's correct, man. And uh, with these young kids, they think that you're just going to wake up one day. And, you know, just be an entrepreneur all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it it doesn't happen like that. You know, it takes time. It takes sacrifice, you know, and I have to say you you have to have some luck in there somewhere. You know, right. you got to meet that right person that can help you, you know, get to that next level. You know, and fortunately, I, I've had all three of those. Hmm. So you kind of alluded to some expansion into Atlanta. What what's next for you that you can share without giving away too much? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. You know, um, of course, uh, you know that I have. Uh, I'm a minority owner of one of the uh, bars, uh, Nashville Underground yes. on Broadway. You know, uh, we're purchasing some yachts in Miami. Mm. Uh, we're gonna rent. We're gonna rent those out. We have a community going up in uh, Mexico Beach, Florida, mm. uh, that we're currently working on. And uh, we're, we're building houses now. So, mm. you know, that premium that I was paying to builders, now I don't have to pay that anymore because now I'm the builder. You know, so uh, we're doing that. And, uh, you know, I heard Nashville is getting a major league baseball team. Yeah. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, that's so, cool. You know, well, he, you, well, okay. I, I guess see what you're saying. I'm not saying nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let that. I'll let that rest then. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we'll have to. The audience will catch that, and maybe in future future listenings, they, they'll catch. Yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what that's what that is. You got to come back. Yeah. Um, this is just an overload of hashtag Black Excellence. I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely I, I just um i just can't people who went to tennessee state university in the 90s and really early 2000s 
um, they'll be able to reflect on what I'm saying here. Like, I'm just impressed that you were able to capitalize on an opportunity. And, and yeah, you, you mentioned, you mentioned luck. I do agree with that. That's part of it. But I mean, the, you know, you get the break, but then you got to follow through. Right. And, and so um, I'm just happy that somebody like you was able to do it. I remember when we first met, I think you were coming out of A&M or going to A&M, I think. And, um, and, you know, just to see you take, take it from soup to nuts and, uh, and now expanding is awesome. So I'm definitely happy you came on the show. Um, definitely will have you back for future episodes as you get on covers of magazines and whatnot. And um, <laughs> <laughs> you can't claim we serious. Yeah, yeah, no, we say yeah, definitely, 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 definitely. Hey, you, um, you know, I'm always going to support you, always. Definitely, definitely. Did you guys have anything else for Derek? No, thank you so much for coming on, Derek. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Derek. Well, Thank you guys for having me. I, I really enjoyed uh, going back down memory lane with you all. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you come back, you know, and you've reached, you know, De- Deca Millionaire, I think that's what it's called. Uh, you know, you can maybe, <laughs> maybe sponsor the show, you know. Maurice, are you, are you throwing a sales pitch out yeah, there? Always, man. Always be closing. <laughs> Well, bet. All right, Sierra. You, all right. You well, with that being said, thank you all for listening. Please visit us at www.wilsonwealth.com on Instagram and Twitter at Wilson Wealth and on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Wilson Wealth for more information about us on the company. We'll see you guys next week on the Wilson Wealth Show. Thank you for listening to the Wilson Wealth Show a thought-provoking show about building wealth in the new economy. Each week, members of the Wilson Wealth team and their guests will discuss how to navigate the world of stocks, real estate, and entrepreneurship to help you build wealth in the new economy. Please join us next time on the Wilson Wealth Show.